Talking with people with music in their genes, their blood, and in their soul. You are watching Musical Interlude. Welcome to another episode of Musical Interlude. Today's guest is Tommy Ticka of Tommy Ticka and the Personators. Let's take a listen at his journey in the music business. Okay, first question. Um, can you tell us if you can remember the very first time or how old you were when you first started to have an interest in music? I, I, I was six. Um, and um, I suppose I had, music st uh, started interesting me a little bit before that, but I remember being six and I remember um, being in my dad's car. It was an old che Chevrolet and we went to get gas he went inside to pay as you did in those days. You didn't pay at the pump. And um, he left the tape on in the car. It was Paul Anka's uh, 21 Golden Hits. And um, I remember being very uh, impressed by a song called Lonely Boy. And um, something, it, I had listened to music before, but there was something magical about that particular moment. I, um, it, something happened where I, wanted to start started uh, I wanted to start writing songs myself I played a little bit very sort of the knew the very basics of guitar and uh when we got home uh, I remember asking my dad to give me the tape these were cassettes you know nobody has music cassettes anymore um and they were sort of um old even then but um but I remember taking the tape and the tape player in my room upstairs and playing the heck out of it and pretty soon then started writing my own stuff um because i that's what paul anka did he wrote his own songs i wanted to be a songwriter the and and that's really where it, where it started you know so there are many people out there who have a dream not necessarily just in music but they have dreams but they haven't try to follow them due to fear, due to discouragement. So what would you say was your driving force to actually go ahead and do this as your, your, your career? Well, it's in the beginning and, and in, in terms of the career, this was, this was a decision I made in my teens. In, when I was six, it, it was a decision to love, fall in love with music or to write songs. Um, I remember being in my early teens and watching Elvis and Beatles movies. They were reruns. These were old movies even then. And, uh, but I was very impressed. I was very impressed um, with the, uh, the female attention these guys were getting. And that was the initial pull for me. Um, it, it sounds very silly, but of course, you know, the thought process of a 16 year old is silly, you know? And so I figured, you know, I can do that, right? Not a bad job. And uh, really started practicing in terms of playing in front of a crowd. And then as years went, went on, I fell in love with music and music production. And, and the, obviously the reason for, be, for my being in it changed drastically. Uh, nobody, nobody will stay in music for 30 years if, it isn't, if it's just for the female attention. But, um, but I got also very lucky. Then, then the band, band that I had, Carmen Gray, got signed to Sony BMG and things started happening. So I think that uh, it, it was a combination of um, that initial pull, then falling in love with music, and then, of course, um, huge luck. Um, so... Being in entertainment business is probably one of the only businesses where everyone in it doesn't have the same story of how they got into it. You know, to be a real estate agent, basically the same thing, to become a doctor, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But there really is no how-to books or um, college on how to get into the music business. So how did you even know where to start and where did you start? I didn't know where to start at all. Um, but but uh, I remember... Uh getting my first very small recording contract when I was 21 with a very small indie label and nothing came out of it. And, um, but, but I think that that was the first, the first very professional thing that I did. I'm afraid I wasn't very good uh, at that point. I remember going into a professional studio thinking that I'm a great singer, but not, it's just not really being able to uh, both sing in tune 
and project. I think that I could do one or the other, but but it, this this is the problem with 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 a lot of first timers in the studio, and I was no exception. Uh, but but it grew from there, and obviously, um, even if nothing came out of that, um, I I gained valuable experience, and um, I just I kept at it, and um, and to, and then one day one day my brother and I um, started writing songs together um, for, for what was originally his band, Carmen Gray. It wasn't called Carmen Gray in the beginning, but we'll call it Carmen Gray now because it's, it's, it's a confusing story. And, um, and that collaboration obviously took my songs and our songs, my brother and my songs to the radio. Uh, also, we got to work with um, uh, these these world famous producers uh, who work with basically Hanoi Rocks and you know all, all the all the incredibly big names learned from them. Um, got to work with um, with with professional songwriters to a certain extent. Learned from them. It was it was a combination of all of these. I think that what what it really was that getting all the breaks at these appropriate intervals and 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 and. Uh, I, this sort of uh, not just willingness, but this passion to learn the trade and 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 to become someone. We were just talking about this with my brother the other day, and 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 I just said that it was incredible because we almost wrote every day. We just it was almost like we didn't put the guitars down at all. Nothing else mattered. We were going to make it, and lo and behold, we did. You know. So talk about your song driving me insane. Um, what was the inspiration? Um, who or what? And if you are afraid you might get in trouble, you don't need to name any. No, it's okay. Names. I've always, I've, I think that, uh, um, you know, I've always had very, um, shall we say, challenging relationships <laughs> with, um, with, with women in the sense that, uh, um, and being an old school alpha in in these days isn't it isn't really very easy. I, I think that. Um, I, I, I come from, uh, uh, from, from, from probably the, my dad was, was in, in, was a merchant Marine. And so I, I come from, a from, a from that kind of background. And I think that driving me insane was just, it was just another relationship that was, uh, working at a, at a sexual level perfectly. I don't know if I'm, if, if I can say these things on your show, buddy, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, sure. and okay. And, and on, on quite a few other levels, but then the emotional intimacy, was just you know every once in a while we all get unlucky you know if i'm really honest with you since we're not naming anyone you you kind of you you get unlucky enough to uh get get into a relationship with a narcissist and um and that's really what the song is about uh it it's it's a bunch of painful memories i, I think that um, if anybody listening is in is in one of these things and 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 is suffering it just you know, get out while you can. I I was lucky enough to uh, have the self-esteem that I always did. I often wonder how regular people, I'm a regular person, but people who do not have, you don't, do not get fan email and don't have good reviews and people telling them that, oh yeah, your latest single was great, how they survive these things because the purpose, the sole purpose of these, these individuals is to basically tear other people into pieces. And that's, that's really what the song is about. Okay. So your last question, if you could do a collaboration with anyone, whether they be dead or alive, who would it be and why? Uh, I, I think that it, it's a couple of, um, I got a couple of folks that I definitely like to work with. Uh, I've been asked this before um, um, and my mind's always going between Gene Clark of the Birds, John Lennon, and Paul McCartney. Since McCartney's alive, and and I kind of, you know, he he he's always come across as this incredibly level-headed dude. You know, uh, I I I I I'd, I'd love to, uh, uh, to collaborate with him, to learn from him, to just meet, to be honest with you, to meet him. Um, he's such a huge influence in in all possible ways. I think that um, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and, 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 and he, like I said, he comes across as this guy that, you know, if we, if we sat down, had a few drinks, um, chatted for a while, it'd actually, uh, probably be a great night as well. I think he'd be a lot of laughs, you know? And, and, and so, yeah, definitely Paul McCartney.
Mark Anthony. I guess that's me. He had Rome, but I'm all alone. I think of you. I feel a fool. You'd never leave your hallmark fantasy girl. Are you pity? Thank you for watching another episode of The Musical Interlude. That is all we have for you today. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to thank our guest, Tommy Tika, and I'd like to thank you, the audience, for watching. Have a great day.